Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today we're talking ARC Genomic Revolution Multi Sector ETF, ticker symbol ARKG. As a disclaimer, this is not investment advice. This is just a research video that I put together meant to be educational as well as entertaining. We're going to take a look at a few different holdings within this ETF and try to understand what makes it so special, in my opinion. So, I'm going to highlight a few different news clippings and articles surrounding Kathy Wood, the active manager for this ETF, and then we're going to take a look at why I believe this ETF is the way of the future. Please enjoy. Uh, so what we are looking for in terms of impact is figuring out have costs associated with one of these platforms drop to a low enough uh, level that uh, they're going to unleash waves of demand and get us into that exponential growth curve. Uh, so whether it, it DNA sequencing, we're there. Uh, to give you an example, uh, DNA sequencing costs now are below uh, $1,000. Last year, uh, the number of whole human genomes sequenced around the world was 2.4 million. That was half of all the whole human genomes ever sequenced in history. So we're already at the tipping point and uh, we believe that number is going to go to 100. So that's almost a 40-fold increase in the next five years. Uh, so that is truly exponential growth and it is going to change healthcare decision making. It's bringing real science into healthcare decision making for the first time. Uh, so our geneticists and you're going to have one, so am I, are going to be able to identify for the first time the needle in the haystack. Uh, they're going to be able to identify which genes in our um, genomes have mutated. In other words, they've developed a programming error. And now with CRISPR gene editing, following it up, we're going to be able to correct those programming errors. It's going to be incredible. To, to catch cancer in, in stage one and then edit it away. We think that's going to be possible in the next five to 10 years uh, and probably sooner than that. So that's real impact. So we're almost creating these superhumans. <laughs> uh, well, longevity, yes, uh, human lives will be extended, but the quality of human life is going to improve dramatically if we're able to move away from treating cancer as a chronic condition, and that's where we've been going recently, but to actually correct uh, the, whatever the mutation ha that has taken place very early on, that's going to be huge. What I find very impactful and fascinating about Kathy Wood is how she thinks in the long term. So let's take a quick look here I have a lot of skin in the game when it comes to this ETF. I'm going to drop you into Madeline's portfolio. That's our daughter. She's She just turned six months a few days ago. And in her portfolio, I hold five ETFs, all the ARC active managing ETFs. And ARC-G, for me, um, thus far has been the best performer. And so, you know, I, every week, I, my wife and I, we donate uh, into or we invest uh, in this portfolio. And I'm very excited to be doing this in the long term. So obviously, this is an 18-year minimum portfolio for our daughter. And I really, really like the companies that are in this ETF. So I just thought I would showcase the portfolio so that way y'all can understand why it is that i am a big arc bull so just a just a little insight as to where i'm coming from now we'll take a quick look at some of the holdings and i really really like you know i like teladoc i like illumina editas i like a lot of these companies and and we're gonna get into why I like these but we're gonna highlight right now we're gonna look at Regeneron and kind of understand uh, why Regeneron and uh, Illumina 
are very, very important for this ETF and why gene sequencing, uh, gene editing is a, uh, is a big uh, momentum play for, for this ETF. So Illumina is uh, being housed right there at 2.54%. And again, since this is an actively managed ETF, the allocation with the shares are it fluctuates right so at any moment as the company sees fit they can adjust the portfolio so let's take a quick look at what makes this etf tick on the block came a sequencing technology called illumina and the way that illumina sequencing works is that you have a piece of dna you stick an adapter on each end um, I'm going to call this adapter 7 and this adapter 5. It doesn't really matter. And then you have a glass slide, like a microscope slide, kind of, um, where you've attached already sequences that are complementary to these adapters. Okay. And so you create your DNA, you attach it to the slide, and so you have one piece of DNA here, and one piece of DNA here, and one piece of DNA here. And then you do what's called a PCR reaction, which amplifies this piece of DNA just in this locality, amplifies this piece of DNA, amplifies this piece of DNA, just in that local region. Okay. Once you've got um, a, little, a large amount of DNA just in those little local regions, you then do the sequencing where you add our fluorescent uh, DNTPs. So DNTP is a combination mm -hmm. of DATP, TTP, and DGTP. The N means any. And so you wash across uh, the fluorescent molecules. Again, you have a very sensitive detector that can detect um, where each base is being added. And you do it by taking a series of photographs, doing a bunch of image analysis on those photographs, and that gives you this. Illumina, depending, so they have a, a couple of different machines that you can use. Actually, have a, a range of different machines, but their main machines, there's the MySeq, and they have the HiSeq. And the MySeq um, generates in the order of about a gigabase pair of reads. And the high seek, if you get it really cranked up, can generate in the order of 10 gigabases or maybe even 15 gigabases if you uh, really optimize it. Remember that the human genome is about three gigabases, right? So we're sequencing multiple human genomes at this time, at this level, which is what they're trying to do. Um, and the cost for a MySeq run is, it, depending exactly how you do it, but it's in the order of two to $5,000. So it just really depends how many different samples you put in, how many library preps you do, um, and each of the steps. If you just do in one sample, it's cheaper. If you do multiple samples mixed together, it gets more expensive. Regeneron is one of the largest biotech companies in the world, really a company that focuses on great science and improving patient outcomes. For Regeneron, we focus on something called the exome. And when we sequence the exome, that's the 1% of the genome that actually makes the proteins. If we can do these large-scale sequencing studies so we can find mutations in certain genes, then we can have very high confidence that with our antibody-based technology, we can bind specifically to those protein targets that we find and make a very effective drug that can help cure diseases. We've sequenced about 150,000 people in our last two or three years, and we're also moving forward at a capacity of, you know, in excess of 150,000 people a year. And now we're doing very large-scale human genetics gene discovery for new target discovery. We're applying it towards validating our existing drug development programs, guiding the development of our therapeutics, and also looking at pharmacogenic applications for our existing programs. We started in the lab prepping 20,000 samples per year. We've scaled that capacity at least tenfold just by innovating on the technology side. Just three years later now, we've increased those targets to be a couple hundred thousand exomes per year. And so as we continue to scale that, we need to have sequencing capacity that can keep up with that. The NovaSeq platform and the continual innovation and ability to scale our sequencing and our numbers is really going to help us now do what we've done for our first 
handful of diseases and discoveries across the board. It used to be that our rate limiting step now would be at the sequencers, and we could add more sequencers to compensate with that. But with InnovaSeq, I'm sure it's going to be a while before we're outstripping the capacity of those machines. Speed is critical. One of the most difficult parts right now in the drug discovery process is delivering really good targets into the pipeline. And that the faster we can sequence these samples and the bigger we can build up these data sets, the more success we're going to have. As we think about continually scaling our sequencing output, it becomes a little bit unrealistic to continue to add machines to our current existing fleet. We have over a dozen different machines in our sequencing fleet right now. So this new platform, this new infrastructure, allows us basically to start over and redesign for a whole new uh, scale and output that we want to move for the future. Something great about the NovaSeq is the ease of use. Got a new user interface, it's much more user friendly. The way it's been designed is that you'll be able to place these things in a lab and there'll be a very quick adaptation for how you can use these machines. The reagents come cartridge based, so thaw them out, pop them on the machine, all of the clustering is done on board. So really, combined with our automation, the robots can take it right through to that final step before the sample has to be put on the sequencer. So we'll be able to take that manpower that was currently in the sequencing lab, repurpose it somewhere else, and continue to increase our sample prep capacity in the lab. We used to think about projects in a certain size and feasibility, and we've completely blown that up. Once we get the NovaSeq, one of the first things we'll do is we'll compare it back to our data that we've already generated in the lab. And for what we've already seen from Illumina, it looks like the data will be incredibly high quality, on par, Q30 scores with what the 2500s are producing. We're confident that Illumina has developed this two-color chemistry to a level that it's going to be huge production scale a success. We at Regeneron have been the firmest and most strident believers in the power of human genetics and the need for human genetics in our industry for drug discovery and development. We certainly could not do this without the technology and the capabilities that we've been enabled by Illumina. So that's just a little insight into Regeneron and Illumina's technology and the science that goes behind the company so as to understand why they are allocated in this ETF, which makes it so special. We're looking here at this article, which is highlighting the companies that own the CRISPR patent. And we see here in the human therapeutics, Intellia, CRISPR, and Editas, the three companies that are allocated in the top 20 holdings for this ETF, which make it so special. In my opinion, if you aren't 100% sure about the CRISPR-Cas9 technology, check out my Invite or my CRISPR videos, and hopefully that should get you up to speed with it. But, you know, feel free to take a look at these companies that own the patent for this technology and this science, and it's quite beautiful. Not just as a biologist myself, but as an investor, it helps me feel very comfortable and confident with the companies that are allocated in this ETF. So we're going to take another look at a continuation of that interview with Kathy Wood from Livewire and really understand why these companies are in this ETF and why this ETF needs to be, in my opinion, utilized, not just in the short term, but definitely in the long term. And it's just going to help us understand, help us try to imagine a life where this type of science is utilized for everyone. Explaining this. If I had told you or any investor in the late 90s that there were going to be three companies with the foundational patents uh, uh, behind CRISPR, Cas9, which is the most advanced uh, gene editing flavor, I'll say, these days. Um, and I had told you these companies are going to cure diseases that have been the scourge uh, of human existence, right? Uh, they're going to cure. They're going to be able to cure pediatric blindness or cancer, as I mentioned before. Uh, my guess in the late 90s, when investors were chasing dreams and too much capital chased too few opportunities too soon, that those three companies the cumul would have accumulated in market cap to roughly 200 to 300 billion dollars in market cap, right? They would have because uh, they'd get a royalty on every therapeutic uh, that was going to be developed. And today we think the recurring revenue base in terms of the therapies just for single 
gene uh, caused g diseases. We think that's a recurring revenue base of 75 billion. They'd get 10% of that. Single genes are responsible for only 2% of all diseases. That's just the beginning. So the idea of 200 to 300 billion dollars, certainly in the bubble, easy, easy. Uh, today, those three stocks in the market uh, together uh, can't even reach five billion dollars in market cap. Now think about it. Apple is a trillion dollar market cap company and it's changed our lives and we love our Apple uh, phones and AirPods and watches. Um, but the, Apple is not curing cancer. It's not curing disease. Uh, these companies we believe will, but there's so much fear in the marketplace and there are all kinds of reasons to avoid them. Uh, the cap is too small, or, and, which is the kind of circular reasoning. The cap is too small, or they've just entered human trials. Uh, I'll wait to see what happens. Well, that'll be too late if these human trials are successful. One of the first one being pediatric blindness. A baby born blind, you correct that programming error, the baby can see, it works in mice, it works in non-human primates. If it works in human beings, think about how, how, what the reaction will be. Well, we'd prefer to be in the stocks before that reaction. And you know, one thing I'd like to emphasize, our analysts have domain expertise. Uh, Man Manisha Sami, one of our two genomics analysts, worked in Stanford University's biology research labs for eight years. She experimented with CRISPR gene editing. She's now volunteering at Memorial Sloan Kettering with one of her Stanford professors, and she's still experimenting with different technologies like CRISPR and DNA sequencing, but more important, she's seeing the researchers' reactions to these new technologies, mm -hmm. their excitement. Uh, so I really believe we, we have domain expertise here, and, uh, and Manisha really believes this is going to work. So that's some deep insight as to why Kathy Wood values and appreciates the innovation that goes behind this ETF. So let's take a quick look at the six month trading window of my trading view of ARC G. I'm highlighting some levels of support from the low 40s all the way up to where we're currently at in the high 60s. We had a decent pullback last week leading up to currently where it's sitting at and I notice here every time that it makes a run it has a solid pullback and the continuation of some stair-stepping patterns of ascension I definitely see some growth here and especially with why I've kind of highlighted throughout the video my belief in this ETF I'm just noticing that there's going to be some strong gains the uh, throughout the course of this ETF so life and let's play out a few different scenarios here so i'm going to make a trend line for a level of resistance around the 70 dollar mark just for me this is something that i do from time to, from time to time when i'm looking at the movement of a stock and i'm trying to see it pop through this level of resistance so that way it can become a level of support right and it can go any way we know that but if it does pop and it does stay above $70, then I think all these levels of support, right, throughout the high 60s, then that's what they're there for. They are there to support the stock. And only good news can come from the price action staying above that $70 mark for myself. However, let's, let's play out the second scenario where it continues to fall or there's a, a massive pullback and it reaches a level of support around the $60 mark, right? It was, in, it was just trading there not too long ago, so let's not act like it can't trade there again. So if it does fall, and it does pull back, and it hits the level of $60, I would hope that it trades sideways there. If Perhaps if it dips below $60, I won't be surprised if anything happens, right? But I can see that level being a solid level of support and for it to continue to trade so just to wrap it up and i'm sorry for the chart you know getting a little messy but 
my technical analysis will help me find the levels of support, find some levels of resistance, and hopefully it can turn a level of resistance to a level of support. So I believe in this ETF long term, right? I mean, I'm holding this for Maddie, you know, for 18 years. I'm going to continue to invest into it. I trust the process. I really do look forward to seeing where the companies within this ETF can can go. And just to wrap it up, I believe that it will continue to grow substantially. All right, I'm going to leave it here. I want to thank you for your time. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. If there's another company, ETF, or an IPO that you'd like to see me research, just drop it in the comment section below, and I will do my best to get to it as soon as possible. So again, I hope everyone is staying safe out there. Hit that notification bell, and until the next video, I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.